Good day for all of you. Welcome to the new, another Connection Wednesday, March 21st. The first thing today I have to apologize you because our pretty woman product engineer Jana Kadirova is currently ill and I'm only backup so I hope it will not be a disaster today. With me is here Adam Kozoshek and we are product engineers of Idea Statica. As usually, we have a control panel in the go to um, uh, go to window. Please ask questions by this question panel anytime you want. We will try to answer them all during the session. Adam prepared for you a new customer project from Rumble, a frame with uh, with uh, tubes through it and he is really excited to show it to you. As a small help desk highlight, I will show you a small trick how to disable loads if you have plenty of them. At the end of our webinar, there will be a time for questions and answers. So now it's time for my colleague Adam. Adam, please show us the great joint. Okay, greetings. Uh, good day to you. Um, it's Adam here. Today, uh, instead of Jana, there is VTEC presenting. So uh, it's another nice colleague in our office. Uh, so let's get back to the example we prepared for you today. It's the customer project uh, of Kistefos Museum. Uh, Kistefos is a place in Norway uh, and this is a, a um, amazing project from my point of sight, uh, from my point of view. It's a, it's a combination of a building, sculpture and a bridge. So it's basically a bridge over the river of Kistefos, um, including a museum inside and itself. It is a, a great piece of uh, architecture that was designed by a big uh, uh, group of architects and um, the structure was uh, designed and calculated by uh, Rumble, that's a Danish engineering uh, office. And so they used for uh, design a Tecla software and um, they um, checked, uh, code checked the, the joints with Idea Statica connection software and um, of course they used um, the, the BIMLing with Tecla um, to IDEA as well. And I'll, be show, I'll show you how to um, model one of the joints from scratch. So um, let's get to that. So let's just start a new project. And as usual, I'll just choose um, the material, 355 steel grade and some starting topology, uh, this 3D cross frame. And I will modify this geometry to the one I need. So I start with the column, change from continuous to end it. And I change the cross section um this will be the the, the basic frame uh, which is uh, made of uh, hem um, cross sections 600 now i continue with the member b1 this is also uh, the same cross section and this will be also the bearing member Okay, then I continue um, with the member B3 and B4. Those will be the, um, the, the tubes intersecting the, um, 
beam B1. So for that, I will change uh, the cross section to a general tube because this was um, the cross section Rumble used was out of the the library we have. So we can simply um, input it in this way. Just set the uh, diameter and thickness and uh, get it there. Um, by default, uh, maybe you noticed uh, I have some um, digits after the comma. Uh, if you want to have it uh, more precise in any part of the software, you can easily change that here in units. And here you can change the decimals after the comma. So if, if you miss some, uh, you can um, make it more precise. Like for now, I added one digit after the comma. So that was just um, a side um, tip for you. And let's back, get back to this. I'll set the length here and the angle. And for the B4, the same cross section and the angle like this. So we make this um, tube like something like continues going through and through. I will show you at the end a trick how to do it properly, but this is how the model was created originally. So I just follow the original setup. So for uh, the last one, um, member B2, it's again a tube length of uh, 1800 and uh, again a general tube of cross section of 306 and um, the the thickness is of 16 millimeters and of course I have to change the angle here so it will be minus 8.0 6 and minus 66.9. So this is the basic geometry setup for the joint and we continue with the load effects. So in this case um, I will turn on the check equilibrium so we'll be able to um, load all the ends including the uh, the bearing member and I will go to um, to the uh, folder where I have my forces um, saved so as we can see we have a uh, um, a lot of uh, combinations here. Oh, probably my sharing stopped. Can you just confirm that? Uh... Yes, I saw Okay, good. Okay, good. So um, here um, we have a list of internal forces uh, from all the combinations for this joint. So there's a, a lot of them, so for now I'll just uh, import one of them uh, and uh, colleague Vitek will uh, comment that later when we'll, he will take his word. So um, okay, just imported the forces right in the place for each member, just the usual case. And we move uh, on to design and we'll start designing the, the joint. So I will start first with the uh, operation cut and I'll lengthen the B1 column. So I set it as father and if they're offset of 60 millimeters. Okay, then I will cut the 
the column by the beam B1, like this. And I just changed the uh, um, weld thickness, 50 millimeters, and have double fillet welds. So I have this connected. Then I will add stiffeners operation to the B1 member and it will be related to the column SL. So now I change the thickness and again um, set the weld thickness and weld position like this. And they're on both sides of course. Okay, so we have the um, main frame uh, modeled and now we will do with the tubes. Um, so one, let's say, workaround to do a continuous uh, tube through a member is to cut both of ends and weld them to the member web in this case. So I will do this. So I take the member P3, that's the tube, and cut it by P1 and bound in box. Okay. And I just um, change the weld thickness and I can turn on off the flanges because there is no flange on the tube. So we have one side of the tube that's going through um, connected and I do now copy of this operation and set it for the P4. And we have it like through tube going through this frame. And um, then I will show you a trick how to do it uh, the other way. So for now, we are satisfied with this. And we continue by connecting the B2 tube. So I will use a connecting plate operation. And I'll pick the... Um, default bolt assembly, grade and size, uh, like this. And I will be connecting the tube B2 related to B3 tube, which is this one. And I will just um, now modify the, uh, the operation. So I'll set its geometry properties um, in the in the shape I need it. So I'll change thickness here. I'll change here from um, alignment front to center and from the cap plate to notched member. I can maybe explain you a little bit difference between these three notched types. If I switch to transparent, you can see notched member means that uh, you cut the plate into the member. So now the member is cut. If I switch to notched rectangle, it means you cut the plate inside the tube and weld it around. And if I switch to a notched plate walls, then again the plate is cut around the member um, web or walls like this. So this is the three types of um, notched cut, let's say. So I'll uh, pick the notched member uh, in this case and continue with uh, changing the um, parameters here, uh, weld size, position like this. Okay, here I changed the, I forgot to change the thickness to 40. Okay, so uh, this was the first step and we continue now in modeling. So I will add now um, a stiffening plate to connect those two plates together. So this operation, and again, first I will set the uh, geometry um, 
values like this and I will set the origin from joint that is now here uh, in the center node of the joint change this to plate and set it for this plate which is CPL1B and now it's it became a rip by default and I will ch change this to doubler and from the front size which is below to the rear size which is uh, up here. Turn off the welds and move the whole plate towards the connecting to towards the gusset plate. Okay now I'll just copy this for the other side as well so I change to front so we have both plates in position and um, I will now add bolts to connect those uh, two parts so I'll be counting or bolting three plates which will be the SP1 plate, the CPL1B plate and SP2. So now they glow all three orange. So I have it set right. And of course I will change the um, position of bolts like this. And I will just copy this operation and um, add these bolts here. So the only thing here I have to do is change the um, position of the bolts um, to minus to get it in the other for the other plate for the gusset plate. Good. And the last thing is to shape this uh, gusset plate. So we'll go to the editor and shape the gusset plate. And we will use the bevel operation. So I add one. And we'll be beveling uh, corner number two. Um, and by these values. Let's see. Okay, it's looking good. And I will add another bevel operation to cut this part off. And that will be the corner number three. And um, cut by 180 and 360. All right. Switch to transparent. You can see the gap is here. Everything's looking good. The last thing here is to cut the um, tip of the gusset plate here. So I'll add the last operation, um, cut of plate. And I'll be cutting CPL1A, which is the gusset plate. And I'll be cutting it by plate of member, B1, this one, and by its web. And now we see it disappeared, but that's not an error. It's just the other surface that uh, um, cut it. So we just change it to the minus. So we'll have the rest here. And I change the wells to double fillet wells to have it on both sides and change its thickness. Okay, so we're done with the modeling here. Now I just um, calculate the joint. And uh, oops, I have um, the bolts set um, set wrong. Probably I I set the wrong digit here, wrong value. Um, but uh, it doesn't matter because still I, I want to save time uh, not showing the calculation, and I have it calculated here already to show you the result. So uh, in the overall check, we can see um, quickly that this is um, this passed the code checked, uh, 
this joint is okay, very well designed as well, because we can see um, it's uh, up to its limits or up to its um, um, capacity. Uh, most of the parts are green and these welds are orange, that means up to 95.9% uh, of its utilization. So if we just quickly go through the um, um, results here, you can take a look at the equivalent stress, mesh and deformed shape of the joint. So we can check the um, stress distribution along the joint and um, yeah, also check the strain where it occurs. This is mostly in elastic state, just some welds are in plastic state. Okay, I'll just um, uh, finish this uh, result browsing because that's the usual process uh, that you do every time um, at the end of modeling in Idea Statica. And uh, I wanted to show you um, how to do the trick with the uh, continuous through tube. So let's get back to the project here. I will simplify it so it will be um, more visible. So I'll just turn off the operations here. Um, I'll just leave the uh, the basic frame and the stiffeners maybe. So I go back to geometry. I will turn off the B4 member and also to have better visibility B2. And I will now work only with the B3 member. So uh, I will change the geometrical type from ended to continuous. So now it's really uh, it's really um, going through, as we can see in transparent mode. And then I go to design, and here I will just do one operation. Uh, cut of plate. So I'll be cutting this plate by this tube member. So this plate is um, um, member P1 and it's plate web 1 and I'll be cutting it by member B3. And I have to change the cutting method to surface. Now, if I switch to transparent mode, we can see that the, the web of the beam B1 is cut. There is a hole and the tube goes uh, through it. And of course, I can play now with the, with the welds to have it uh, as a full weld on both ends or both sides. So this is a trick for you how to model a really through and through tube through um, plates or members. Okay, so that was for my part and I give word uh, to Vika that will show you the um, um, disabling load trick. Thank you very much, Adam, for the effort. Uh, and we can continue with the help desk highlight. We had a question, how to disable loads? Well, in the version 8.2, uh, we have to use a workaround. So let's jump in right to the application. I will open the same project as Adam showed you a few seconds later. Let's go to the load effects. You can see we have plenty of them. 
in effect, almost 600. And as you can see, we don't want to uh, ana analyze the joint for all load effects because it will take a lot of time. So let's back up our load effects. We can export them all. I will save my backup to the desktop. And now I can delete all of them uh, and uh, keep there one, two, three of them. Just give me a second, I will delete a few of them. Okay, let's say I decreased the number of load effects and I'm satisfied now. Now I can, of course, check the joint and uh, fine tune it. And if I'm satisfied, I will delete all of them. And I can import again all load effects which I saved as a backup. It's right here in the Excel spreadsheet file and this is the export function from Ideastatica. I will choose only for example 18 of them, press Ctrl and copy and paste them here. Let's confirm it and we import, we import it a backup for sys load effects. Now we can run analysis again for a whole set of load effects. Uh, many of you already know in two weeks we will have a release of new version 9 and I have I want to show you uh, one small sneak peek preview from version 9 and we will talk about the load effects. Okay, here is our project, same one. You can see here at the right part of the 3D scene, we have a new control object, we call it tree of all entities, and we, here we have load effects, all of them. And you can see that we have a check button and we can turn off and on everything that we need. So simply by clicking I will turn off the load effects that I don't want to use for code check. So I can fine tune uh, my joint for one or two of them, save time, and then when it's over I can turn it on and run analysis for a whole set of them. Let's jump back into the presentation. Uh, this is all from our webinar and I have to ask you about uh, filling of short survey which will be after the webinar. Uh, this survey will help us to, um, to uh, make these webinars better, it's for you, it will take you only a few seconds, please fill it. Recording of this webinar will be available tomorrow at our YouTube channel and in our webinar step at home page. Also if you're not a trialist you can get a trial version at ideastatica.com by filling of small uh, form. 
And don't forget, uh, we have resource center where you can find all tutorials, webinars, um, videos, theoretical background, and many more. Uh, we recorded all webinars so you can study it uh, in your free time. And next Connection Wednesday webinar will be at April 4th. And right now we are looking forward to it. Thank you very much for your attention and have a nice day. Wish you a nice day. Bye bye.